I'm going to move over to another image here and this one you don't have and I want to talk about layer modes for a second here. I have an image with a red on the background and a layer that has a pure black, a pure gray, a mid-tone, and a pure highlight. So on top of using clipping masks and layer masks with perhaps gradients or um, other just simply painting in black and white onto your layer mask to be able to create your composites, you might want to start playing with the layer modes as well. So the layer modes allows for a different type of blending between the two different layers or the layers, the layer on top and the layer underneath. So just to explain a little bit about these, because really the best way to learn about them is to work with them yourself and just get that experience. They are in groups. So we have, we start by um, default on our normal. The next group here is all about darkening the images. So I'm going to choose the most common mode from this one here, which is the multiply. And what we're going to see in when I've switched to the multiply layer mode is that my white disappears because it's darkened. It blends with the layer underneath and my grays blend with the layer underneath. So my gray now picks up and it's the same sort of tone, but it's now picked up the color from underneath. So it's just blended with those, but it didn't get any darker and my black stayed black. So I lost my highlights. My mid-tones absorb the color underneath and my black stays black. And I'll switch to the other group, which is going to move in the opposite way. This is going to lighten this section here. And I'm going to choose the most common one, which is the screen one. So the opposite happened. My white stayed as they are. My gray became lighter. It absorbed the color from underneath and it blended with it. And I lost my blacks. So the end result is going to be a lighter image. It's going to blend the two layers, but everything is going to be lighter. And you can probably guess what this middle one does here is it's going to target the middle tones. And I'm going to choose the most common, which is overlay. And now I've my mid tones have been blended with the layer underneath. My blacks and my whites both also blended with the layer underneath. And I can see my blacks stayed dark, but they absorbed the color that was underneath. So I now get dark red instead of a dark black. And my whites, I now get a light color from the color that was underneath instead of a pure white. And my mid-tones are gone. So if you go through the worksheet that I have attached on Blackboard, I have a couple of exercises um, working with the layer modes and filters to show you some kind of neat tricks for getting special effects using those modes. The last sections here, um, I'm going to let you just kind of go through them. They are more effects types of modes. So I'm going to move on to my next image here. You now kind of keeping all of this in mind. And what I have here already is I have two selections that have been made. I've already copied and pasted a portrait onto this image with the tree and I've masked them both out. So they both had white backgrounds and I used layer masking, which is what I covered in the last um, two weeks ago. I used layer masking to be able to um, black out their white backgrounds and just reveal what's underneath. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit and just to continue with layer masking, um, I'm gonna double click the layer mask here. So actually I'll step backwards. If you don't remember how to do this, you start out with your image you're going to use your selection tool to make a selection either of the subject or of the background. Click on the layer mask icon. It's automatically going to take your selection and convert it into a mask. And you may have to invert it. So you're going to double click on the layer mask icon. And if you need to, you'll switch the invert and you'll see I just inverted mine. So now I lost the portrait and I have the background there. That's not what I want. And you could now um, play with the feathering and the density and get some kind of effect. But the next step I would go to is the mask edge. And that's where we get all those um, smooth options that we had used for coloring the lips of that face image and um, some of the other options. So I'm going to pick up here. And first of all, you may have it on the show your selection, show your mask on a white background. But if your background that you're trying to clean up is white, it's not that helpful. So from this drop, drop down, I'm going to pick on black. And now I can see, I'm just going to click outside to uh, get that to go away. I can see that I did a pretty good job of masking out and getting the edge of his hairs, but I could certainly work on that a little bit more. So here in my refine mask window, I have a zoom in tool 
I'm going to use that to zoom in a bit on his hair. And now I'm going to take this icon of the brush, which is to refine radius tool. And I'm going to paint over the edges of his hair. And I'm not even trying to be that perfect. And when I let go, it's going to bring the edge in. I'm refining the radius of that mask. And of course I could change my brush with, I'm just going to kind of quickly go over this and I'm just trying to show you a little bit of a fast sample here. So I'm reducing the size of that mask a little bit. I'm kind of refining those edges. And if you find that you've gone too far, you can switch the tool to, to the erase refine. It's going to do exactly what you would expect. So I'm going to stay on this one and I just want to get rid of any areas that have that pure white. Of reducing that down. So now I have a little bit of a better starting mask to work with and I can start making my adjustments here. I'm going to increase my contrast, sort of make the edges of my mask a little bit more um, kind of spiky to represent where his hair is. Increase that a little bit and as you can see though, so I'm getting a sharper edge and, but I still have a little bit of that white background. So now I'm going to shift my edge here and I'm going to move it to the left to allow it to constrain. And so now that's a pretty good starting point. So I still have some little spiky edges, but I've really cut down onto the edge. Now, if I did choose to do smooth at this point, I'm going to soften the edges of his hair and I kind of want to keep the spikiness. So this is a pretty good starting point. Um, I could then continue working on it, taking my radius brush and go and touch up this little areas here. But you can see there's a big improvement um, on the edges of his hair here. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to minimize that so we can see a little bit better and just reduce the size of everything on my screen. So I'm going to move him over so he's kind of underneath the image of the tree. And what I want is to fill his face with the image of the tree. So the image of the tree is the layer that's on top and the layer of the portrait with its own mask is below. So I already have these masks here we're hiding their backgrounds. I'm going to use the Alt key. And by the way, if for some reason the Alt key doesn't work, you can also right click on it and get the Create Clipping Mask option. So now I have him, um, I see the outline of his portrait and I have it being filled with the tree. And so now if I'm on that tree layer and I take my move tool, I can kind of move it around and see what it's looking like. I always keep a background layer of red. Um, and by the way, you should just know this is how I look at your projects. I always, if, if you have a background of white, I fill it with red so I can really zoom in and look at your selection. Or sometimes I'll just create a red layer while I'm looking at your project. And I find that it gives me the most contrast and really allows me to see the edges um, and to see what needs to get touched up and how refined they are. So I'm just keeping this here as a temporary so I can really see the outline. So I can kind of keep working with um, moving that around until I get to the point that I think is kind of interesting. And now I'm actually going to alter this mask. I'm going to click on that mask and let's see what it would look like if instead of being just a mask of the tree, I use the gradient tool like I did in the last example. And I can kind of create some sort of effect where I see parts of him I'm going to actually move the gradient in the other way, and he's kind of blending through. I could also, of course, um, I'm going to continue moving with parts of him. So let's say if I wanted to have the lower parts of him as the branches, but then show through to the hair. Or I could go in the opposite direction. And then I could either lower the opacity of that layer or I could lower the opacity of the layer mask. So they are both have independent opacity values. So I could change that. And let's just pick up from the last one and see what would it look like if I switched the layer mode. So if I go into one of the darkening ones, such as the multiply, he blends through, these two layers blend through and it, the overall result is a darker image. And let's choose from one from the lighter, I'll choose screen. So here you can see, now I can, I kind of keep the values of his face and the darker parts only, 
um, here, oh, sorry, the lighter parts are what's showing up. So that could be kind of an interesting combination to be able to create a blend. And I'll do the last one, which is overlay. And so now I'm kind of seeing, I'm keeping his mid-tones, um, but they've blended, the mid-tones of the tree have blended with the mid-tones of his face. So hopefully um, this is giving you some ideas and to things that you can play with for your composite portraits. You could continue working from here. I could create some other kinds of effects um, onto any of these masks. If I increase their filter, sorry, their feathers, for example, and had sort of a glow, um, and working with the layer modes, I could, of course, also continue to work with any of the adjustments that we've just sort of slowly been looking at. Um, such as the photo filter or color balance. And all most of these adjustments, by the way, um, also work over here in the layers panel. I click on that black and white circle. I'm going to click up here. So I can create an adjustment that is going to affect both of my layers, and it's also very non-destructive. And it's appearing on top, and it's cascading down. So it's toning both of my um, layers here, but it's also a great way to work because if I don't like that effect, I can just turn it off. So I kind of slowly introduce the all the different types of adjustments we have through the image adjustments. And when you work with image adjustments, it's just going to apply to whichever layer you're on. But if you want to use those same adjustments as a layer adjustment, you can go down to your layers panel and click on one of these, and it's going to create that adjustment as a separate layer. And you can choose to where that layer where that layer adjustment is going to affect by its order in the layer panel. So if I just wanted to affect this image, I could drag it down here. If I wanted to affect all of my images, I could drag it up to the top. Okay, so I hope that gives you some ideas and um, happy working.